The Mummy 2017, Defending the Dark Universe. A lot of people seem like against the idea of a Universal Monsters, a Universal Studios Monster Universe. You can tell I'm reading my notes. Uh, we're not starting. I was turning anyway. A lot of people seemed against the idea of a Universal Studios Monster Universe. I wasn't. I used to live in Orlando. You have a bunch of iconic monsters from old school Hollywood. They have the longevity through the Universal theme park system. You see them all the time in 90s Halloween costumes. And it should have worked. I have notes about Tom Cruise. I have notes about Dr. Jekyll. Which I start. I think one of the problems that I will address with this starting Universal Monsters universe is that it wasn't fully planned out. I have a bit of an issue with Tom Cruise as the main character of this series and possibly franchise. I would have preferred Russell Crowe. Tom Cruise's character isn't an original Universal Studios monster character, although later on you f figure out something else. And it wasn't really that memorable of the film. Over the top Tom Cruise is what sells post Magnolia and Eyes Wide Shut. Over the top Tom Cruise is what is like most from Tom Cruise. Post 1999. I actually thought his partner in crime in the beginning was really good. And he should have been a main character. His casting, Tom Cruise's casting, always seemed like a bit of a distraction than what would consider perfect casting. Seen more to be done for fame than whatever. The Dr. Jekyll cameo, meanwhile, was very good. I thought it was one of the better cameos this year, which I'll address later. It would have been done better if they had hinted at it earlier, though, and they were going to do a multiverse, and I don't think that was the original intent. I think originally they just wanted to do a mummy film, and then later on they decided to add the multiverse stuff later. They should have hinted at it, added a scene, added a narrative by a narrator, possibly Tom Cruise, about forming a superhero monster team. They mentioned it a little bit, and it doesn't seem campy or witty or intelligent or something I would care about in this film, although there are a lot of positives to this film. I think their idea was to make a billion dollar franchise. And it's hard to say if it will, which I'll address later. It's going to be hard for them to make a billion, but I think it's broken at least a couple hundred million, which is alright. I don't think it'll be any more than 410 million, probably. A solution to the fact of introducing Tom Cruise and introducing Dr. Jekyll without it seeming awkward would have been to... Started off as a crossover, much like Avengers or even the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. In fact, wasn't this the plot of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, except it was done better? But the cameo was still way better than <coughs> Power Rangers cameo in Power Rangers. And if you don't want me to spoil it, I'll tell you after the split cameo, which I'm going to discuss. The split cameo. Like, what the heck did that... Did you really need superheroes in Split? I don't think so. Especially, you didn't need to bring back what's the name. And Amy Jo Johnson and Jason David Frank. I even know if. It's, it's, it's better I told you that the cameo exists because, like, my brother knows who they are and he doesn't even like Power Rangers, but he just didn't have enough time to see who they were in the scene for that point one second. 
and the five bucks they were paid to show up in the scene. Some people like to address about this franchise and the media around the Universal Monsters not working is that who cares really? You obviously didn't as it only made 12 million in the US and a lot of you didn't like the idea of a mixed Universal Monsters universe. So if you do, why do you care? You don't watch it. You didn't spend your money on it. So why are you complaining about it? It's been nine years since the last film. More than the amount of time between Prometheus and Alien Covenant. The recent two Pirates films, Pirates of the Caribbean and Dead Men Tell No Tales. I forget what the fourth one was. And it was seven years between The Mummy 2017, not 1999 or 1932, but 2017 and The Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. And so will grow the myth that it was actually worse than it actually was. As no one watched the film, it only made 12 million. I'll probably be pulled from theaters and this weekend, tomorrow, probably tomorrow. A common kind of criticism of the film was that it copied a lot from Mummy 1999. And I'm the Power Ranger professor, so I might as well address this. It was not like that at all. Copying it would have been scene by scene, which you see in Godzilla films, which you see in the Chaos and Traxos era, directed, produced era of Power Rangers, especially during Neil Saban with Power Rangers Samurai, where it was exactly shot scene for scene, except with different characters. Why they do that, I don't know, but that's not what Mummy did. They did their original stuff, even if it was based off some of the concept art, some of the concepts, but it was still its own thing. Not to mention, it's sort of like Titanic as addressed by Red Letter Media, where there's only so many ways you can tell the mummy story. There's more of the technical effects than actual storytelling. Who really cares if the Universal Studio... Everyone's making a big deal about the Universal Studio Monsters... I don't even know who actually cared about this in the first place. Like, before they're saying it's not going to do well because no one knows who they are. That's because you don't know who they are, and now you care all of a sudden. Like, the MCU has made bad movies before, and no one cared. So why do you care about Universal Monsters movies? It's not like there's a lot of TV shows based on this. It's not like. Maybe your childhood was involved, maybe your adulthood was involved, but I don't think it was as big of an influence as other stuff was. DC has made bad movies before and uh, everyone cared for some odd reason. MCU has made bad movies before and no one cared for some odd reason. They've had films about the same amount of time The Mummy hasn't had films, MCU has. It's like a $6 ticket on Tuesdays, which you probably have to pay for full to actually watch it when you're concerned that the money didn't do well because you don't watch it. This is an example of internet gossip. Listen to people on YouTube or IndieWire or some WordPress that they, the Illuminati got them into. And they're just repeating everything they said opposed to creating your own opinion on the thing. Like, why does... As a primary professor, I gotta care, mention this. Why does everybody care if Kimberly or Kat was the original love interest of Tommy. It's shipping. In universe, there's a certain interpretation which no, most people don't care about anyway, and it has nothing to do with you. Let the characters do what they want. You want to call it art, but you have to treat it as art as well. Not to mention, no one's perfect. Does every universe have to be good on the first try? As I mentioned before, not that many really people... A matter of people in the U.S. care about the Universal Monsters, sorry, Dark Monsters universe. Obviously not. It didn't do well in the U.S. at 
Everyone supposedly cares yet they don't watch it in the theaters, much like Scott Pilgrim, etc. Scott Pilgrim, some people say it was great, although I thought it was a bit obnoxious, although done by Edgar Wright. I felt this was an okay film. I'll get to some good points as well. As I mentioned before, I think there's a fan base behind the Universal Monsters. It was... The Mummy, at least, was never that quickly acclaimed, in my opinion. Brendan Fraser, everyone knows, was an action film. It wasn't a horror film. It wasn't high art. It was entertainment. Although well-produced, had very special effects, was very entertaining entertaining, etc. Brought life back into the franchise and interest, unlike this film. It was a sleeper hit, and it got a sequel, two sequels for the franchise. After 85 years of this film franchise, all they had to write was a story about the dangers of magic, like Frankenstein had with the dangers of science, and still no one has done that. It wasn't a perfect film, the 1932 film. But if you're watching a cinematic universe outside of Star Wars, possibly nothing has been perfect anyway. In Star Wars, you have the prequels. Everybody makes mistakes. And there were a lot of positives in this film. I thought the actors did a phenomenal job. The female doctor is a female doctor in the film. She acts like a female doctor. The army sergeant acts like an army sergeant in the film. I'm not saying this is a high concept art thing, but like Navarro's Avengers, they're like... They're Power rangers -y job tropes. Secondary character is a good wingman for the lead character, played by Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is the lead man. The villain is who she is, etc. I didn't think the humor was that great. Then again, I don't usually laugh at these films anyway. I didn't like Jurassic Park's humor. I didn't like Avengers' humor. I didn't like Thor's humor. And a lot of these films, a lot of these films, I even consider have bad humor. This wasn't that bad. It was mediocre, at least. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. It's like my comparisons with 80s Ghostbusters SNL translate to 2016 Ghostbusters SNL. They did what their audiences wanted and they should do a good job. It's, they were kept, they were aiming towards a certain audience and they got, were executing the jokes to those audiences. I felt that some people will get good jobs out of this film, like Tom Cruise's buddy in the film, The Army Commander. And of course, the mommy herself has made her a big name out of herself. Algeria, Kingsman, Star Trek Beyond, etc. I wouldn't be surprised if she showed up in the DC Cinematic Universe, Marvel Cinematic Universe, Simpsons, um, James Bond. I mentioned this before, actually. Let me look it up what I said to my buddy about this. Star Wars. Uh, what's another franchise? Harry Potter. So many franchises nowadays. I mean, you get the point. She'll be in everything. Like, she's just that... She's like a chameleon. She can be in Guardians of the Galaxy. She can be in multiple characters in the universe just because she doesn't look like the same character as she does in another... Never. She doesn't look anything alike in most of her roles. Like, watch her Star Trek Beyond role, watch her other roles, the mummy role, the. The three big roles she's been in so far, she hasn't been identical. Which is amazing. And, uh. I don't know if it's the makeup department or whatever it is, but they've done an excellent job. And she's really tolerated the makeup or whatever the process is to be in these different roles. So yeah, the acting was memorable, I, and it's good, you know, you get to see different actors for once. That's like a novelty I've never seen before. Like, there's like three people, I, I mean, the mummy I've seen before, but I didn't know it was her, at least. It felt like something fresh. It, people said it copied 1999, I felt it was different enough. The mummy films, in general, aren't that different from each other, and I felt it was different enough that it was good enough. The special effects didn't tell that much of a story, but they were good. That's all I'm going to say. Like, It wasn't cinematographically very good storytelling-wise, but it was memorable. I don't even know it was memorable, but it, was like, it wasn't cheaply done. 
We live in a time when so many films have special effects that are good. That doesn't really stand out compared to the time when Brendan Fraser had effects that are outdated but were advanced for the time, which is a shame. It's really hard to grade the special effects as a result of all they were done alright. And it was a cheaply done film, so that was done alright. And that was it. It was a C. It was basically a summer blockbuster, much like everything post Iron Man. So, people who hate the film, you probably don't watch it. People watch the film, I don't know. What do you think of it? I, I can't find a person who found it, who actually watched the film. Good for you. Maybe you had your own opinion about it. Please comment in the comments below and uh, see what you have to say about the film.